to Margaret Lewin Quilting. I'm Margaret Lewin and this is the quilt that we're going to finish up today. This quilt was made with a cat's cradle ruler which is a creative goods ruler. It's a great ruler. I'm, I really liked working with it. This is the first project that I've made with it and it really went well. Um, the cat's cradle, I'll show you, is it's this block right here. Hopefully you can see it there. That's the cat's cradle block. That's the one that we worked on. And last video was how I pressed it, my fabric, how I cut my fabric, and piecing the cat's cradle together. So in this one, we're gonna piece the block together and then um, just put the whole thing together along with the borders. Now on the borders, I'm going to refer you to a video where I showed you how I go about doing my borders. So we're going to be watching that in just a second. But before that, I want to show you something that I picked up this week. Um, Pat Sloan's Hometown Girl Collection came out um, last week or the week before. Well, anyhow, the quilt shop, my local quilt shop that I go to just got the boutiques in. Uh, on Wednesday, I think, no, Tuesday, the batiks came in. And normally I'm pretty good about resisting, especially considering how much of the hometown girl uh, regular fabrics I've got. But I have to tell you, I could not resist. I did only buy two, four, six, eight, nine of them which to me was like a major compromise because I really wanted all 24 of them. And here they are. I'm gonna do some close-up pictures for you of them. They are spectacular. One of the colors especially that I really liked were the grays. Grays aren't always easy to find in batiks and I just fell in love with them. They are absolutely gorgeous. Get right into the tutorial on how I went about putting this together. I did take down all of the instructions as I was doing it, so I'm going to actually be able to tomorrow ship off my basic instructions along with pictures so that the girl who writes up my patterns for me can put it all together and make it look nice. As soon as she has it all together, I will get it put up on my website for you. So let's, if you want to see how I finished up this quilt, just keep watching. Thanks. So I've spread out my block just a little bit more and I'm going to show you how nicely these are going to now butt together. So I've got my first row I'm working on and I'm going to bring these two because the way we pressed it, they're just going to come together really nice. I am going to stick a pin right here because I want it to stay together and I'm going to put one at the top and at the bottom. So this is what I'm sewing. Now someone in the ad asked me what a leader and an ender is. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to adjust this camera just a little bit so that you can see. I've got my scrappy border already under the presser foot. And what I'm going to do is, while I'm sewing one, I'm going to pick up over here, I've got all of my squares that are creating my border. And I'm just going to attach those in between so I'm continuously sewing. And those are called leaders because they lead your quilt block in enders because they are what you use when you end your block. So I've got one in right now. I'm gonna start sewing my block. Removing my pins along the way. So there's the first block. Now I'm gonna do my second block. And again, I'm just lining everything up nice. I am going to stick a pin in it to keep it together. And I'm just going to keep sewing. Sewing down to remove my pin. 
now I'm doing my third one and then you're gonna see me grab one of my leaders or my enders and show you what it does what my end one is so I'm just um, lining everything up and I am pinning it Okay, so I've sewn my three blocks. You can see them here. And I'm going to clip them apart. So I'm gonna clip, this is one of my, this is my border. Set that aside. Here's my first block. Here's my second block. And I want my third block. Let's just say I was all done sewing. So I'm gonna pick up my leader and my ender and I'm just going to put it right underneath the presser foot and I'm gonna sew those two seams together because I need that later on. So as I'm working on my quilt, I'm able to also work on the border at the same time. So now I'm gonna lay my block out again and I'm going to be picking up my next piece that I need to add to it. So here's my next piece. And again, I'm gonna put a pin. So I wanna make sure that I don't turn my pieces over, or my seams over. I want them to lay nice and flat. And I'm gonna pin this bottom piece because that seems to be moving on me. And here I go. Pins out when I need to. And then my next one. This is my last one. And then I'm gonna need to take it over and press it. So I definitely need my ender to be able to take my fabric out. pick up two more pieces just gonna match them up these are my two and a half inch squares I'm gonna match them up best I can and then just run them through and what that you can see what that does is that gives me the ability to bring my other piece around and separate my three rows Cut that off and whoops, put that aside. I'm gonna go press. Now remember, I'm pressing the first row to the inside, the second row to the outside, the third row to the inside, and then I will put my three rows together. Lena, I went to edit the video to get it uploaded. I realized that all of my filming of putting the blocks together is gone. So I'm going to verbally I'll just walk you through it instead. Once I had all of my four blocks put together, then I just went and started cutting solid bit, or actually it's a tone-on-tone -tone background fabric to be able to do this. This is a solid 12 and a half inch square. These four pieces were done by cutting a square and then cutting it diagonally. I'll insert the size of what the square was up in here someplace so that you can see it. And then these pieces 
were done by cutting a cutting two squares and cutting that one diagonally also and again i'll insert the size of it then i did a two and a half inch strip all the way around and then my piece borders that were two and a half inch squares that i sewed together to give it that scrappy kind of border so when I went to put it together, this is how I did it. This was for me considered row one. So I attached a triangle to my square, then another triangle. We did a quilt just like this when we did the Moda Sampler Black Shuffle. It was also set on what's called the diagonal. This is my row two. So I started by attaching an end piece, then attaching it to the center, then attaching this in another end piece then this was row three and it was put together the same way attaching an end piece to the square and then another end piece and then this is my corner piece and then i just attached one row to two two to three and it was done um got it all together and then did my borders this border was done uh, first second then I added my top and my bottom and then um, added the outside borders to get it all put together. I'm really sorry that the tape of it's missing, but um, I'm going to refer you again back to the Moda Sampler Block Shuffle because we did that one on the diagonal and I walk you through each row as I do it. This obviously is substantially smaller. So... Um, I'm going to refer you back to that one and refer you also back to my border quilt so that you can see how to go about attaching borders. So it really was pretty quick to make. So there you go. Please do check out the videos that I've already done on borders. I'll put the links below. Borders are really important. If you don't get your borders right, your quilt won't end up square. So it's really, really important that you get your borders correct. So check out those videos on how you go about measuring. And, oh, Tucker, what's the problem? So check out the videos below on how you do go about doing borders. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me. You have a great day. Bye. Tucker's here. I'm patting my tuk-tuk.